Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. We just need your signature. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes, uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Let's check what they have on offer. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Patch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galici is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. <laughs> Sherry, I'm over here with my new ursine companion. What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck in. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? Then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. <laughs> the cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. 
This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right. Help me, please. My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. Huh. And would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Can you satisfy my curiosity? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. I didn't see the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke! A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything. I was after a British noble who takes boxing lessons but suffers from some liver issues. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol. Lord Craven. And don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret. I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The Half a glass of foul bless, scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly! 
Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. A feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Ooh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But the stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Seems like you're ready to delve into your mind. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. A feebleness of women. <sighs> this looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Rose de Moore. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. Size four, with a broken heel. So, definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... <sighs> no. This Our witness was a nosy tale, maid. Hmm. Find your princess. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Are you able to help me? Oh, yes. I can tell you everything, sir. This painting looks authentic, but it's just a talented imitation. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this Staff place. Staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Ooh. 
Ooh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? You're here, at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Ah! 